Over the past few days, Canadians were shocked and frankly disgusted by the behavior displayed by some people protesting in our nation's capital. I want to be very clear. We are not intimidated by those who hurl insults and abuse at small business workers and steal food from the homeless. We won't give in to those who fly racist flags. We won't cave to those who engage in vandalism or dishonor the memory of our veterans. There is no place in our country for threats, violence, or hatred. So to those responsible for this behavior, it needs to stop. To anyone who joined the convoy but is rightly uncomfortable with the symbols of hatred and division on display, join with your fellow Canadians. Be courageous and speak out. Do not stand for or with intolerance and hate. Do you think that Justin Trudeau on January 31st, 2022, just came up with those statements that painted truckers and their supporters as ideologically motivated and espousing violence against their fellow Canadians as the truckers headed to Ottawa to protest vaccine mandates? I mean, it's reasonable to think that Trudeau came up with something so stupid and so void of any basis in reality just right off the cuff. We know he's neither a smart nor eloquent man. I will never apologize for standing up for an LGDP, uh, LGT, LBG. We have uh, recently switched to drinking uh, water bottles out of uh, water out of uh, when we have water bottles uh, out of a uh, plastic. Uh, sorry. I'd like to ask you what you think about that. And if you don't want to comment, what message do you think you're sending? But that's not the case. Those words Trudeau chose were part of a carefully crafted marketing strategy that grew out of the public safety minister's office to slander the peaceful convoy to Ottawa, which stayed in the nation's capital for nearly four weeks, peacefully protesting the remaining COVID-19 restrictions. To see the coverage of that protest that Justin Trudeau doesn't want you to see, you can check out convoyreports.com. Now, I know Justin Trudeau's talking points were pre-prepared. Because Rebel News filed for access to information into the public safety minister's office. We went looking for their media lines and briefing notes about what they planned to say in the media about the convoy in advance of its arrival in Ottawa. If you'd like to support our independent investigation into the government through access to information, please consider making a donation at rebelinvestigates.com. Now, what you're seeing here is a direction from a January 28th email. So just as the convoy was starting to arrive and the liberals had already decided to portray the truckers as ideological extremists, we can see the minister's office is instructing the department and the RCMP to focus on the ideologically motivated angle in writing their briefing notes and media lines on the truckers. Look at this. The minister's office has made the following request. They want a complete question period note on the trucker's convoy, and then they link to a CBC article about the convoy. Naturally, they did. The National Security and Cybersecurity Branch, so the anti-terrorism people, they're the lead on this note. They should respond on the ideologically motivated angle. RCMP should be consulted and provide some lines on the legitimacy of the convoy and how the protest is going in terms of peacefulness and violence. And then naturally, again, they link to some CBC slanted coverage of the convoy. You can see the deadline here is January 28th, 2022 at 2 p.m. Please ensure that the proposed speaking points reflect any recent media lines or recent comments by ministers on the issue. Now, you can see the briefing note written the very next day alleging the protest is gaining momentum and possibly expanding to include groups and individuals with extremist ideologies. But again, they don't provide any evidence of this whatsoever. Maybe it's not necessary. In the same briefing note, the bureaucrats are giving the politicians talking points to remind people to continue to get their information from 
I guess, the CBC, which has retracted several stories related to the convoy for publishing false information. Look at this. Ideologically motivated extremists push their hateful narratives and divisive conspiracy theories both online and offline. Canadians should always be mindful of where they get their sources of information and where possible, always seek advice and guidance from official trusted sources. I guess those are the same official trusted sources that one page above you can see cooking up a way to discredit the convoy by painting it as ideologically extreme and using the National and Cybersecurity Branch of Public Safety Canada to lend credibility to their plot. Now, those are the same trusted news sources that reported the convoy was somehow involved in an arson when it wasn't. Those are also the same trusted news sources that said a woman dancing on the grave of the unknown soldier was associated with the convoy when she wasn't. Those, I guess, are the same trusted news sources who said that Russia was somehow behind the Freedom Convoy twice when it wasn't. Russian actors could be continuing to fuel things uh, as this as this protest grows, but perhaps even instigating it from, from the outset. Those are also the same trusted news sources that said guns were found in the convoy when they weren't. And those are the same trusted news sources who parroted the government's talking points that the police asked for the invocation of the Emergencies Act when the police did not. Commissioner Lucky, we've heard multiple times from ministers and others that the Emergency Act and the tools provided were specifically requested by police leadership. As a law enforcement agency with primacy for national security, did you ask the government or representatives for the invocation of the Emergencies Act? No, there was never a question of requesting the Emergency Act. There was thought, a question. Sorry, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, I'm sorry. So you never asked for it. Do you know of any other police leadership that asked specifically the government for, for the invocation? No. You can't trust the government any more than you can trust the mainstream media. They're all telling the same lies about the same people. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. If you'd like to support our independent access to information investigations, where we hold the government to account for the things that they say behind closed doors when they think nobody is listening, please consider making a donation to our special investigations fund at rebelinvestigates.com. And thank you in advance to everybody who donates to make this important work possible.